In this video, I wanna take a few minutes to explore another ES6 feature we're gonna end up using to fix a problem with our current application. This is the default parameters syntax, and that's going to allow us to set a default value for a function parameter should no argument be passed in. Now we'll explore this in isolation in the playground folder, then we'll integrate it into the application to fix a problem with our code. So to kick things off, we have one through six already in here. I'm going to create a new script, seven, and I'll call this something like default params.js. And in here, we're gonna start with probably the most basic function example you'll ever see, and then we'll explore how we can improve it with default parameter values. Let's go ahead and create a greeter function. All we're going to do is accept a name as the first and only parameter, and then we're going to use it as part of a message we print down below. So something like console.log, hello, space, followed by the person's name. So I'll concatenate on using the plus operator, the value stored in the name variable. Now, if we go ahead and call this, we know exactly what's gonna happen. And down below, I'll do just that. I'm going to call greeter, passing in a value for name. I'll go ahead and use my name, Andrew. Now from here, we wanna run the script. So down below, I am gonna use control C to shut down Nodemon, and we're gonna switch from the web server folder to the playground directory. So cd dot dot forward slash playground. And once I'm inside of here, I'm just gonna run the script. So that would be node space, then seven default params dot js. Now, when I run it, I'm gonna see hello Andrew print, no surprise there. What I'm interested in though, is what happens when I don't pass in an argument value to greeter. So right here, all I'm gonna do is call greeter with no arguments. Now I'm gonna run the code once again, and we're not gonna get a JavaScript error. The program isn't going to crash, but the result we do get is just as undesirable. Right here, when I run it, we get hello undefined. So when a name is provided, things go well. When no name is provided, obviously we can't use it, but we could definitely do better than this. Instead of something like hello undefined, we could print something like hello user or hello anonymous. Now the reason we're seeing undefined here is because that is the default value for a function parameter if no argument is passed in. None is provided here, so name is undefined, and I see undefined in that message. Now obviously, if we wanted to address this, we could put an if statement inside of the greeter function to check if the name exists, if it does, use it, if it doesn't inside of an else clause, we could print a completely different message, but we can also use the default parameters syntax to achieve the same results with a lot less code. And to set up a default value for a function parameter like name, all we do is use the equal sign right after it. So for the moment, let's go ahead and add a second argument into the mix just so it's easy to visualize. So we take in name and we take in age. The goal is to set a default value for name. What do we do? We go ahead and we use equals right after it, followed by the default value we'd like to use. This could be anything. It could be a function, an array, an object, a number, a boolean, or in our case, a string. Now, what name do we wanna use by default? We could just use something generic like user or anonymous or hello person, whatever you wanted to use as that default string. Now, if I save things, we can see how the program is gonna function. If an argument is provided, that value will be used, which means we'll still see hello Andrew. If no argument is provided, then the default value will be used, which means for the second printing, we should see hello user. Down below, I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the program after saving my file, and that is exactly what I get. I get hello Andrew when Andrew is provided, and I get hello user when no name value was provided. Using this syntax makes it really easy to set up default values for your function parameters. There's one more thing I wanna talk about before we jump back into app.js and explore the issue we're going to address. And what I wanna talk about relates to destructuring. So let's take a quick moment to open up that other playground file we created, which was number five, ES6 objects. In here, we explored how we could use the object property shorthand, and we explored how we could use object destructuring. We destructured as a standalone statement, and we destructured function arguments like we saw with our transaction function down below. 
Now, in this case, we were destructuring the second argument. So I was expecting it to be an object. Now, currently it is an object we're passing in product, but what would happen if I didn't pass in any value? We know the default value would be undefined. That's the value used if you don't pass anything in. So what would happen when we try to destructure undefined right here? We can see what's gonna happen by running this script. So I've removed that second argument in the call to transaction and I'll run node five ES six objects.js. And when I do, I get a JavaScript error. Now the actual error message is cannot destructure property label of undefined. So what it's talking about here is this line that is line 32, which it mentions right here. This is where we try to destructure a parameter. No value is passed in. So undefined is used and we cannot destructure undefined. Now we can easily address this by setting up a default parameter value. So here we are destructuring undefined because no object was provided. If we wanted to fix this, we could set a default value for that parameter equal to an empty object. Now we're always going to get an object, whether it's passed in or whether the default object is used. Now let's run the program one more time to see what we get on line 33 when we log all three variables out. Down below, I'm going to use the up arrow key and enter to rerun the previous command. And what do I get? For name, I get Andrew. For age, I get 27 and location Philadelphia. That's coming from the first example. For this console.log, I get the type value of order. For label, I get undefined. And for stock, I get undefined as well. So here, label and stock are both undefined because no object was provided. So we destructured the empty object and this object has no label or stock property. So we see undefined for both. So by setting up this default object, we can make sure that when we destructure an object, the code works whether or not an object is ever passed in. Now from here, you could take things even further. When you're destructuring, you can also set up default values to use if you don't find a match. So in this case, Let's say that for stock, I want to use zero if no stock property exists on the object that's passed in. Like I would for a parameter, I just set up equals afterwards and I pick a value. Let's go ahead and use zero. Now, if we rerun the program, we're going to see that order still prints for type, undefined still prints for label, and now stock is zero. Now, once again, we're only seeing zero because no object is provided. So we're destructuring an empty object. We try to grab stock off of that empty object. It doesn't exist. So zero is used. If I pass in product, we are going to see the value up here, 201. Let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. I'll pass in product. I'll go ahead and rerun the program and I get order, red notebook and 201. So in this case, we pass an object in, which means we're not destructuring the empty object. We're destructuring the object that was passed in. That object does have a stock property. So the stock default value isn't used and 201 ends up printing. So that's just a little bit of information on default parameters and how we can use those with destructuring. Now let's go ahead and get into the problem that we're running into in our program. And to do this, we are first going to head back over to the web server directory and start up our application once again. So for me, that's going to be cd dot dot forward slash web server. And once we're here, we're going to rerun that node mon command. That's node mon source forward slash app dot js. And we're going to set up our extension list js and hbs comma separated. And then once we run that, we can go ahead and use our application once again, right here, I refresh things and I'm going to get the updated forecast for Boston. Here we can see rain and windy starting in the evening. And this is updated information. Now, what happens if I don't provide an address where a match can be found? So if I provide as an example, an exclamation mark, we can see that we get an error. This site cannot be reached. And the problem is that our server actually crashed in the background. If we go ahead and scroll up, what do we get? We got an error that we've seen before. Cannot destructure property latitude of undefined. 
So in this case, the geocode callback gets executed. We pass in a value for error, and we don't pass in a value for the success data since it was not a success. We could not find a match. Error is provided in that case. Now, the problem here is that we're still trying to destructure this object. To fix that, all we do is we set up an empty object default value. Now, the program is going to work as expected in both cases. So I'm going to add that on, save the file, and down below we get our Nodemon server restarting. I'm going to refresh the program, and what do I get? I get my correct JSON response. Error, unable to find location, try another search. Now, if I was to swap this out for a good location, once again, like Philadelphia, this time I would still see what I'm expecting, my three properties with the forecast showing up. So by setting up a default object for the object we're trying to destructure, we make sure that this code still works even if no data was provided. Now you might say, doesn't that mean that latitude, longitude, and location would be undefined? And you're right, they would be undefined when I destructure them off of this empty object. But in that case, we know error exists, which means the only code that runs is this code, and this code doesn't use those three values. That's only used down below when things went well. All right, that's a quick aside, just fixing this little problem in our application. That's where we're going to stop for this one. There will be some challenges throughout the class where you will have to use the parameter default value syntax. So let's go ahead and jump back in and actually wire up the front end of our application to use this endpoint and allow the user to fetch weather from the browser.